Hey guys, how we doing today? I uh, got asked, well I get asked every once in a while no matter what, about sharpening knives and just how do you sharpen them, what's your favorite methods, yada yada, just some little chitter chatter, nothing special. I am by no means an amazing knife sharpener and there's a lot of other videos out there um, and a lot of other more knowledgeable people, but I'm just a guy with a passion that's sharpened, I don't know, a lot. I sharpen quite a few things. So I am going to sharpen this Hogue Deca with MagnaCut. Um, I've used it here for the past solid week and the edge is not bad. Um, it's still, it's still okay. Well, it's not bad. It's not great. So anyways, not dissatisfied with the edge so far. Edge retention seems to be just fine and everything, but the angle on this one, and I don't know if you've seen the other video or not, it's just not hundred percent perfect. So figured, Hey, I have the ability. This is a compound set up here we're going to actually put two different edges on this and i'm going to show you how to do that um, or how i'm going to try i'm going to attempt it anyways we'll see how we do i'm going to do probably a i'm going to see what they are first so i'm going to show you how i find the angle of what it was or is currently and then we'll go from there and i'll make a decision on what it what I want it to be. So right now we're at 25 degrees. And all I do is I take a black Sharpie and I only do one side of the blade here because I just need to find it, is all. And I do the side where is gonna be my strong side. So my right, my right side. That is my most steady, strongest, you know, it's gonna give me the most accurate results. That's why I start there. Now on sharpening, however, I start opposite. I start on my left side. So over here versus my right, just because it's easier for me to correct any mistakes on the right. So we don't need this going very fast. See if we can get a little slower here. And this is the very finest belt that I can get on this uh, Work Sharp Ken Onion Edition. So, all I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this flat, get a square for 25 degrees right now. And I'm just going to run that whole blade real quick at 25 degrees and see what we have. So what we have, if you can see or not, is 25 actually did pretty good on that back edge, but it missed the top edge up here. So this does come with factory compound grind in my eyes, or at least looks that way. So now I'm gonna keep that at 25 back there, I think. That's a really good sturdy edge. Um, good for pushing hard, being on a convex. I don't mind a good sharpened 25 degree angle on an everyday carry pocket knife. I cut a lot of cardboard and tape, things like that. But it's still sharp enough if you if you know how to sharpen. Um, and that the biggest thing with sharpening is just consistency. So from here, I'm gonna loosen this belt. We're gonna drop this angle. And I think I'm gonna go to, I think I wanna go to 17. I think I'm gonna try 15, 16, 17. And we're gonna see where this is. I'm probably gonna stay here no matter what. I'm gonna redo this grind just because I'm gonna retouch this up and I'm thinking about just doing this whole video in time that way you can see how long it actually takes I'm not a fast sharpener by any means and this is being a compound setup is going to take a lot longer anyways so I just get level and when I come up I may double check this again lean to the point where I want to be at get the angle where I know I'm secure, a few points of contact, and then I come out, and we're just doing this side here. Check that off. And that actually, 
that did pretty good. And I don't know if you can see this, but it looks like their 25 came from here and faded into that a bit. And then it doesn't look far off from a 17 up there. If you can see that or not. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do 25 back here, 17 up there. And let's get this set up and let's get working. Since this is pretty close on those angles, we're going to skip the coarsest belt here. We aren't going to use the most coarse one. We'll save that guy for a little later. And I've tried some different belts and everything. So far, the ones that you get from works is about the best that I've found all around, easy to get, use. Um, I wish they sold in a little different packaging. This belt has always had a twist to it. And you think that it's sitting there, shouldn't be that hard to get out. It shouldn't, but it's a pain. That's my medium belt. And it will sit there and always want to bounce back forth. So, course belt, throw it on. And again, I'm not gonna go too fast on my speed. But I also don't wanna go too slow. So we're gonna do that backside first. So we're gonna take this up to 25 real quick. And we're just gonna try, what I'm gonna to do to keep me in line here is where this steps off, I'm gonna come back a blade's thickness and give me a reference point. And this is just to let me see, because I, I'm okay with that 17 coming back farther versus the 25. I wanna, I'd, I'd rather blend it that direction back than the other way. I think that would solve, I think you could get hung up here on the corner, cutting through things if you didn't, if you blend, if you blended it the other way. I think, I don't know. So I'm gonna kick up a little bit of speed here. And that's probably about halfway. So again, I start on the left side, just because that's me. Just marking out my references to make sure I, it's not going to take much to do this side. Yeah. This is basically just a belt switch here. Touch more. And already, I've got a nice little fine burr. So that is sharpening pretty well right there. I'm gonna hit it one more time here. I can kind of see it. Let's see what kind of a burr raises on this. Okay, I didn't see any more rays yet. And it's got a little burr there. I'm gonna hit it one more time. Yeah, I feel a nice little burr. I'm gonna go ahead and come to this side, get a good feel for it here. Oh yeah, I just raised right up. I know it's almost impossible to see that glimmer on there, but it didn't raise huge or anything, but it raised right up. So now all I'm checking is equalness, left to right, see what looks correct for me. Yeah. 
go back and forth a couple times on this side again. Yeah, that bird just came right up. And for you that are pretty astute, you're saying, well, you're over sharpening it. I am because I want to make sure it has my profile. I, I like my convex. I like my angles. Um, Hogues are perfectly fine out of the box. There's not a darn thing wrong with Hogues angles out of the box. I just prefer a little bit better or my style. So if you heard, I pushed down slightly there. Not a whole lot, but just enough where I could change that tone. The reason I'm doing that is I wanna make sure I get that little apple seed angle to that curve or to that point there. I want it to have that convex edge. Dealing with something that small is really hard to see, especially if you use old eyes. Yeah, it's coming right around. I like touching that edge with my finger. The reason is, is you're never going to take the temper out of anything in just a few seconds. Uh, if you can touch it and hold it for a few seconds. And if you pull away real quick, that's getting in that. Depending on how dead your skins are, 150, 160 to 200 dollars or 200 uh, degree heat range. Yeah, that's starting to look good. Man. And I know this takes a little longer than what most people want to watch, but I'm going to go through a couple more times each one here just because I'm getting that. Honestly, if you wanted to keep that factory edge angle exactly how it came, we would have been done with this blade about an hour. But I'm just wanting to get her right how I want it. And that wire was much finer right then. It didn't roll as much. So what that's telling me is I have really good amount of contact right there. And it's, it's other than that wire, it's sharp under there. Yeah. I'm going to really bother you OCD folks out there is I know I started on the left side and I finished on the the other so or finished where I should have went one back side the OCD guys cut will catch that and freak out that's not equal it's not equal it's pretty darn equal this angle right boy if you can see it I don't know if I can show it there it's a little bit right in front of that black mark that I made you can see the tone difference still. So that's right at that transition point. 
it wasn't hitting that for a particular reason. I'm guessing the other grind has gotten into that a little. So I don't want to take too much material off to catch up to that because we're going to catch up to it here on this other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch this to 17 degrees right here. I'm going to use the same belt. Some guys would progress all the way through or close to. Realistically, I'm going to show you with just this coarse belt here and uh, maybe touch it with a fine once, you're going to be perfectly fine. Again, like I said, I like to start on my weak side. that tip's real pointy. She rolled real quick there, so keep that. We can't go in very far at all. Sometimes you can come halfway in, depending on the angle, but with that point right there, it's going to roll pretty quick, so we don't want to come into that belt more than a quarter of the way. Just gonna take a couple strokes here to get this one to get me my wire up here. Should be coming here in the next two or three passes. pretty though. I don't know how well you guys can see that. Now I'm going to focus a little more time on the back here. Not going all the way to the front. And the reason why, I don't know if you can see, is that angle edge is still off a little down here. It's sharpening plenty up here. We're cutting back where we need to be. This here needs to come down a little bit more on that profile. This other side is more equal directly from the factory. So this is just going to take a couple more extra passes to get it as equal as what I want it here. You notice I'm not going all the way to that tip. I'm feeling this, make sure my warmth isn't getting too bad. Coming back and looking. Now we can see that line, or I can see that line of that bevel dropping back on that blade a bit more. And that's what I'm going for. We're getting real close right there. I'm guessing when you're doing it on the belt, it's picking up this other one here, and it's lifting that belt a little. It's hard to get into that last little edge. Now there I held it on a little longer and I'm automatically feeling it again, make sure I didn't build up any heat. Yeah, we're looking a lot better there.
Yeah, that wire came up there pretty good. Not quite back here yet. Yeah, I know that probably freaks some people out going back and forth a little. That pretty good there. Those compound bubbles, I can see where people are gonna have a little challenge to do that. I'm only doing that on this knife to start, just because I think, I think a guy could just put one edge on this, like 20 degrees all the way through, and have a just fine pocket knife. Now here, I'm focusing on how still I can be. I try to pull my arms as close to my body as I can, lock myself in, and just pivot just a little bit to where I stay almost as much of a jig as it's possible. I'm spending some time on this. Again, I'm doing a little bit my, more of my own angle. And I want it a particular way. So reprofiling a blade always takes longer. That's just how it goes. This steel though is sharpening super easy on this. Um, It's not, I think it's noticeably softer than, uh, or at least noticeably easier to sharpen than maybe my uh, S20 or S30. Okay, so I can feel a little heat there. And if you turn your belt speed down, it's, you know, even easier. It just depends on how much time and patience you have. You could turn it up, but I don't want to get it hot. I don't want to remove more than necessary. I like to sneak up to it versus, you know, try to pounce on it and don't go past, so to speak. And if a guy had like a glass of water or something here, he could dunk it in and... Well, that tip just, she's right there. She's a pokey little thing. I like it. Now I'm just gonna kind of work back and forth a little bit here. Better not go into that tip on my first run.
And I know you're probably thinking, what in the world are you doing? You could go through two passes each one and progress through all your belts real quick and you'd have been done already. And I would have. But we're real close here to being done now. So I'm just going to use this one, or I'm just going to use basically two belts, maybe three. Just to give the edge I want. So now when we're looking at that, you can see it's nice and equal. Both these are pretty close, even though they're different angles and how this blends in here. I'm hoping we'll get a nice little cut in there. So for an everyday carry pocket knife, I like it pretty, I like kind of a toothy cut. It seems to work really well. It seems to hold this edge just as good as if not possibly better than even a mirrored polish. Oh. Six o'clock. Do you have a six o'clock whistle in your town? We do. Now, I wanna go back to my 25 first and do that. I wanna reverse how I done this both ways. So we're gonna do our 25 first. That locked in. This should just automatically raise a nice little bevel. Or a nice little wire, not a bevel. We already got the bevel set. Sorry I got quiet. I was just sitting here in my own little head thinking and sharpening. I do that sometimes. So now I'm just gonna flip this back to 17 degrees, do my front. And this nice little progression here is good because you know once you have your angle set realistically, this is you could almost just go back one pass on your course and one on this, and you're done with your blade. You have it set really nice. So, now looking at this, I still have a bevel on this side. So you know what, or not a bevel, a wire, I keep calling it a bevel. So that's where I'm gonna start at. So I'm gonna knock that wire down on that side, even though I normally like starting left. I'll just start this way. Pull the little wire back up that way. Do it one more time, nice and even.
looking at that tip, I can see I've been scared to pull it a little bit. It's getting a, it's not off, but I can see it's, the wire's not coming completely off on that. I just, I don't want to bend or roll that tip. I'd rather deal with a slightly dull tip than I would a ruined one. thing about doing it this direction from your steeper angle to that one I think the transition if anything you're just going to be micro edging that very front part so it's going to almost be a double convex in a sense whereas going the other direction you would just have a blunt edge oh wow Check this out. I don't know if you can see that. There's a little, just a little glimmer of, boy, come on, focus, of edge there, of wire. Let me see if I can hold my hand to where, man, I think I was better off this way. So if you can see that little shimmer right at the tip, you can just roll it right over. Let's try to roll it back up to where you can see it. But... That's, you know, once you get your wire that thin, you could really realistically rub this on a piece of cardboard, rub this on a piece of wood. I gotta hunk this box here, White River. All I'm gonna do is just get close to my angle. I'm gonna find a nice soft spot. Now I'm gonna just almost like I'm using a leather lathe. It's not a leather lathe, but you know, this actually may glue a piece of leather to this board though. Come back to that one a little. Oh yeah, I can feel that. Um, let's see, piece of paper. Let's see what we got here. I bet you it's sharp. If you wanted to throw the even finer pad or belt on there, you could and mirror it up a little bit more, but I don't think you need to. I mean it. Now I want to see this transition through here. To, that's what I'm kind of feeling, if you can see it. I want to see how that's slicing down into that micro or that. Yeah, she she she'll cut. I mean, oh, tore there, but let's see if we can make some little pigtails. I don't know how many people make little pigtails, but I think it's kind of fun. Just getting a little thin and so thin that it kind of curls a little. Can you see those little curls there? Anyways, there we go. That's one sharpened knife. Um, that's one long video. Sorry, 35 minutes to do one sharpening seems kind of excessive. But that is a complete reprofile. Um, I think I'm pretty happy with that. I'll write my numbers down. And let's see if we can see the transition and everything through there. And now, if you can tell how much more even that is. I understand why it wouldn't come from the factory that way. I mean, granted, they have slightly bigger belts, but I think a bigger belt would be a problem as well. So, I think they've done a phenomenal job, considering it took me 35 minutes. So, I know it took them a little bit to put the edge on it that they did. And the way it came, I think, was pretty pretty darn good. Like I said, I just like a little different angle. I want to try a more uh, good convex edge on it that I like and see how it cuts for, 
you know, how long. See how it holds up. I've never used this magnet cut. Not many people have got a whole lot of time on it. It's fairly new steel. So a daily use for a while and some beating them up. Let's see what it does. Have a great day. Like, subscribe, comment, ask any question you want. Talk at you later.